the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine, and he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and asked and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the patent calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered and f the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, the father came out and pleaded with him. Then he said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I serve you, and at once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. The father said to him, My son, you are here with me always, and everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All please visited for the homily. I will not focus my homily on the explanation of the parable of the prodigal son. You may get it from other sources and much better explanation. I would rather focus on the word leitare, which is rejoice. Joy. Rejoicing. 
late that is Sunday, rejoice Jerusalem and all who love her. Be joyful. Again, based on our structure of spirituality, we are made the body and soul, the human element, and the spirit is given to us by adoption, the Holy Spirit. That's why we become temples of the spirit because we receive the Holy Spirit and his gifts when we were baptized. It's already there, deep down in, in our soul. It must be released. It must be manifested. It must be received by the soul and the soul to inform the body and the body will inform the world. That's why the world becomes a better place because there's already a spirit of adoption the freedom of the children of God in us. But the problem is we focus so much on our body and pleasure and positions and power and enjoyment that all the informations that come into the soul comes from the body and not from the spirit. Instead of being spiritual, we become bodily and too much bodily, too much materi too materialistic. That's why religion reminds us of the interior life, the life of the spirit in us, the spirit in us, the spiritual life. The world bombards us with advertisement, with consumerism. That's why be careful young people, because if you focus on consumerism, on body alone, you will lose your soul. Joy, therefore, comes from the Spirit. In fact, it is the fruit of the Spirit. There's no joy in the world. That's why when Jesus came, the angel said, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Because joy comes from heaven. It's from the Spirit world. It's the effect of the Spirit. The body does not give us joy. The body gives us pleasure. Pleasure only. The difference between joy and pleasure is in its origin. Again, here is the joy. From here is the pleasure. Pleasure builds up and reaches its peak. And then it dies out. For example, the pleasure of food. It builds up when you are hungry. When you are satisfied and filled, then pleasure fades. Gusto mo gin mag-inom sang tubig, nauhaw ka gin, gabilt up siya. Gusto mo ang tubig. Pero kung nainom mo na ang tubig, kadugangan pag ang tubig, hindi na ko, tapos na ko, hindi ubos na, na nasatisfy na ako. Wala na pleasure. Meaning to say, ang pleasure Antesya sang satisfaction. Even in intimacy, you know that. Joy, on the other hand, comes after the event. Meaning to say, it becomes eternal because there is suffering. For example, ang isa ka iloy, o isa ka isudyante anay, Nagatuon siya, wala pleasure, kaya nagatuon siya. Nangin humble siya, nangin patient siya, nangin diligent siya. Pagkatapos, pagka-graduate siya, may joy. O isa ka babae, nga nagabusong, amun ang analogy ni Jesus, nagapasakit siya sa pagpamata, pero after sang kasakit, sang kabata, daw ano ang iya kalipay. Wala sang pleasure sa pagpakasakit, pero pagkatapos, may kalipay siya. That's why amunang definition sang joy, kag amunang ginapramis ang Diyos sa aton, kag gusto mo may joy, di, diri ka sa spirit world. You remember the story in the gospel? Jesus appointed 72 of his followers to go throughout the land of Palestine to every hamlet and villages, 
where he himself was uh, about to go uh, to proclaim the kingdom of God. So he warned them in many places that would not be, they will not be warmly received. So ang balya, andam ka mo. I am sending you like lambs in the weeds of the wolves. In commission sila. Now, giniibra nilang ila ubra. Ta pagbalik nila, nalipay gid sila. The 72 returned with joy, saying, "Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name." Nahadlok sila primero. Pero nagbalik sila nga malipayon. Kay siling nila, even the demons obey us. Subject to us. Amo nang ila happiness. Pero ging koreksyonan sila ni Jesus. Kay ng ila happiness, basi sa ila success sa work. Pag sa ila power to cast out demons. Kagamo ng aton joy, diri salin success, kag power. Pero ano ng ambal ni Jesus? Kung continue yung gospel, siling ya. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Very good. Na perde si Satan in my name. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Hindi ka mo mangin malipayon kay successful ka mo diri. Ob even ang demons nag-obey sa inyo. Rejoice rather. Because you have been redeemed and your name is written already in the book of life. Titan nyo kung ano siya mag-ano ang aton ginoo. So ang joy ninyo, hindi nagmanggaranon ka mo. Ang joy ninyo, hindi nangin powerful ka mo. Bisan hindi ka mo manggaranon, kag hindi powerful, be joyful. Kay makasulod ka mo sa ginarian sa langit, kay nalista ng inyong ngalan, sa ginarian sa Diyos. O, kamo pangkuton ko, anong inyo joy? Joy namon makakaon. O, te, diri. Joy namon, sino ayhan makasabat? Ang joy namon, kay ti, redeemed kami, naluwas kami, napatawad na nga mong sala. Anong imo joy? mag ako sa cancer. Wala ka joy, napatawad di mo sala. Hindi ko mong pisar. So, mo nang joy. Anong imo joy? Nangin nagpasar ako sa board exam. Pero kakonpisar ikaw. Ang ngalan mo, nalista sa langit, kaya napatawad sa lahat mo. Wala. Amo ng problema. Kaya ang imo source of joy, diri sa world, kang hindi dito sa pihal. Of course, we need both. That's not mean nga hindi ka na yan mag-amo. Kung namin ko sina, ang source of joy, hindi diri. Kaya kung amo ng joy mo, hindi ka mag-grow spiritually. Hindi na yung spirituality. Materialism na. That's why damo sa katoliko without being judgmental. Ha? Bisan ako pagani. Amun ni, amun ni yung concept sa life ya, sa pagkakatoliko, diri lang sa body. Pagkaon, kwarta, muna. Pero diri, hindi, wala sa emphasis. Confession, devotion, worship of God. Ha? Wala. Pero ang ni Jesus, hindi ka mag-rejoice diri. Rejoice mong tay term na itong joy. Hindi mo ning joy. Ang joy iya dito sa forgiveness of sins. Kaya malista lang ang ngalan mo sa langit. Kung na-forgive ang imo sins. O na-forgive. Nag-himo kadlag ko ang milagro. Nag-preach ikaw. Nag-nami-nami obra mo. O wala kayo mo kakong pisar ka. Wala ka na patawad. Is that a joyful situation? Nagpang-ayo ka, naging damo, bulig mo to, damo na yung ano mo to, successful ka, nagbanggaranon ka, dalag ko, balay mo, amon na. O, oh, sige mo, sala. Iti, ma-rejoice kasi na. na. I know, nabalaan nyo ng punto sa nga itong ginunga sa Kristo sa sining ibanghelyo. So, amon ang pangayoon na ito. Tutuod nga joy, which is the forgiveness of sins. And we have the means to receive the forgiveness of sins. Penance, almsgiving, 
fasting. Lastly, paano kuno ang makita nato ng joy? Uh, spirituality ni no, pero so medyo bulubod line ni eh, pero hindi imposible. First, get your mind off of yourself. Wow. The more you focus on yourself, the more miserable you will become. Lose yourself in me and you will find yourself. The world does not believe in this word of Jesus. Kaya ang word niya is, no, do not lose yourself. Fulfill yourself. Satisfy yourself. Be yourself. Kay Jesus lain, wala lagi siya be yourself. That's why young people, Kristiyano, Katoliko, be careful sa sinang phrase nga, be yourself, be yourself. Pagan ina, yan nga mga principle, Katoliko ini mo niyo, deny yourself, deny yourself. And carry your cross. It's not about me. It's all about God and serving others. That's why amuna, meaning to say you get your mind off of yourself, in the, as the main reference of everything, but God is the main reference of your life. Kung ang imo self is the main reference, akon ini, ako lang opinion, akon best ng opinion, ako ang centro, ako ang best, ako ang pinakanami sa inyo, Ako ni ini. Ako ni rights. Ako ni rights. Ako ni rights. Ah, tapos kikita. Tiin mo ya duties. Duties mo ya. Duties ya deny mo mo kay ti may right man to siya ihatag mo sa iya. Ako ni right. Ako ni right. Right ko ni, right ko ni ate. Ah, tapos gid mo nang kalibutan subong nag-individualistic kag naga egoistic. Pero hindi mo nang path sang katoliko kag follower ni Christ is the denial of self for the sake of God. Lose yourself and me in Jesus and for the gospel and you will find yourself. May mga proofs na sina, mga santos. Kung hindi magid man santos nga nandeklarar, harada sa palibot, sa tupad mo, siguro amun ang iya lifestyle, kag happy siya. I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God, and all I want of you to share that joy. Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. Second way to find joy, to lose yourself in Jesus. That's why Jesus is the point of reference. Losing oneself does not mean you lose everything you you commit suicide. Losing is you keep yourself but you allow Jesus to use this self, the, yourself, your very self. So it's not losing nga nadula. Rather than amo ni ang meaning niya, hindi na ang akon gusto. Kundi ang gusto kay Jesus, i-entregar ko sa iya. Sa so, muna, example, Lose your property. Does not mean ipakawat mo, isunugon mo, no? Lose meaning, pagamit mo sa ministry, sa simbahan, o sa ministry ni Jesus. Lose yourself. Hindi nga mangin matay ka, no? Kundi nga, pagamit mo ang imo time, ang imo talents, ang imo virtues sa kay Jesus. Kaya nga isang choir, wala gadula ang ila talent, pero ginalose nila, kay imbis nga para lang sa ila kaugalingon, nga mag-video kay dito, ginagamit nila para mag-facilitate sang praise sa Diyos. Amo nang losing. Hindi nga ginakuha sa imo, kundi ginapagamit mo sa Diyos. Amo nang lose yourself. That's why, lose yourself in me, daladi, and you will find yourself. Amo nang ato ang spirituality. Dala ang joy, so to say. Second, use your gifts to help others. It feels good to use your gift to help others. The Bible says, 
God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. 1 Peter chapter 4 God blesses you so you can bless others. When you bless others, God will bless you again. God blesses you so that you can bless others. And the more you bless others, the more God blesses you. If you're struggling through a lack of joy in your life, try serving people in your community and in your church. Then watch God, how God would change your spirit and perspective. That's why amun ang cause ng atun joy, in summary, not the world, but the spirit. But if you choose the path of the spirit, you deny yourself because you're going to offer your talents and time, some of them, of course, to spread the gospel, to glorify God. And you're going to use these talents to bless others so that when you bless others, God will continue to bless you. And Jesus said, I'll give you my joy in abundance. I give you my joy so that your joy may be complete. It does not mean pleasure. It means peace and harmony and being all right with God. Amen.